Tradesmen built America. Not policymakers or desk jockeys, but hardworking blue collared men and women. Join me, Roger Wakefield, on conversations with some of the nation's most successful skilled laborers. This is the Trade Talks. Let's start with a little preframe. Uh, tell, tell me, tell my audience, your audience, who you are. I, I know that you lead with, I'm just a plumber, but that's true. Give us, uh, and uh, those humility classes that you took of the learning annex are really paying off. Uh, so. I didn't take enough of them. <laughs> I, I'm Roger Wakefield, I, and I am. I'm just a plumber. I started plumbing in 1980, so that's 44 years ago. Yeah. And I've done a lot of different things along the way. Okay. But I think what I'm known most far is here in the past six years, I started doing social media mm. and grew to have the biggest plumbing YouTube channel in the world. It's crazy. The biggest plumbing YouTube channel. Every time I say that, I'm like, oh my God, is that really real? You know, every time I say that, it, I find it hilarious because it's like, I know nothing about social media, know nothing about marketing, okay. nothing about advertising. Okay. And do you think you're having known nothing about it was, was kind of, kind of, Grease the sled, like grease the path going in, or t- t- lean into that a little bit. I think it did because I learned as a tradesman okay. that if you don't know how to do something, you you learn, you study, you find out about right. it. And when I walked in and actually even first found out that YouTube was a search engine, I had no idea. Okay. I was like, wow, you know, why aren't we using this? Okay. So it, it was really good. It, it came out really, really well. What was the imperative to start going in the beginning? Like, why, why did you start going into YouTube? What, uh, I had to make my phone ring at my plumbing company. Uh, I had spent $47,000 on marketing companies. Okay. That made my phone stop ringing. And when I say stop, I mean literally stop. How, how did that happen? It was multiple agencies. Every time you go to a marketing agency, they all tell you, you have junk. We need to completely rebuild it. And then you pay them to rebuild it. And then they come back and say, oh, but. You didn't pay us to SEO it, just to rebuild it. So now we need to SEO it too. And it's this much more. Okay. And after multiple times doing that, I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of this. This video is sponsored by Leak Pro. Go check out leak-pro.com. I had spoken with marketing companies about mm. social media. And they were telling me things like, tomorrow's National Pizza Day, make a post. And I'm like, National Pizza Day has nothing to do with plumbing. You understand that, right? I mean, you know, it may to an extent. Unless you flush pl- you bet, out of the toilet. You bet, and, and that can happen. But, you know, the, the truth is, I'm like, what's National Pizza Day got to do with plumbing? And you're like, well, nothing. But if people search National Pizza Day, maybe they'll see your post. Got it. And I'm like, okay, that's not the way I want to be seen. Sure. So I walked into a conference to learn social media at the age of 54. So I'm thinking Facebook. That's what social media is when you're 54. And I was walking down a room and saw a placard that said, get in front of your customers using video. So this is six years ago? Almost, well, yeah, six years ago this month. Okay, coming up in in six years ago. Um, Walk us through what what happened actually at that meeting. You're walking to a meeting Mm -hmm. six years ago. You sit down. What happened? The guy walks out on stage, first thing he says is, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. Okay. I shut my notebook. I thought, this guy's stupid. He doesn't know anything about YouTube. All right. It's just where I store my videos. Okay. I put my hand on the chair next to me <clears throat> and raised up and started kind of twisted and turned to raise up. All right. I'm getting old, so I need the chairs to help me get up. All right. And I looked at the back of the room, and it was standing room only. And all of a sudden, I thought, man, this guy knows something. Okay. And I turned back around, sat down, and looked up at him in time to hear him say, and it's owned by Google, the largest search engine in the world. Mm. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, wait, we send a lot of money to Google. Why aren't we doing anything on YouTube? And that was my plan. We literally, I was there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, walked out early Friday because I had to be on a radio show in Dallas Mm -hmm. Saturday morning. On the way home on the plane, there's nobody next to me, so I've got both tray tables down. Got it. I've got my laptop. I've got my iPad. I've got my big notebook. I've got all the little notebooks they give you in all the different rooms. And I'm coming up with an implementation plan. I'm going through my notes. Where do I start? What's first? And I did that on the plane Friday. Got up Saturday morning, went 
to do the radio show, came back to the office, worked till five or six that evening, yeah. got up the next morning, went to church, came back to the office, worked till five or six that evening. Mm. And Monday morning when I walked in the office, plumbing happened. And we're slammed. And it's not that we're slammed. We had things to do. Yeah. I got the plumbers all out and then called everybody else together and said, guess what? We're changing the way we do marketing and we're changing right now. We're going to start doing YouTube. And I think they thought I was crazy. But did that matter? No, was that not feel? no, it didn't bother me at all. Based on a conversation we had last night, uh -huh. I mean, you were your quarterback in high school. Used to be, and yes, sir. Left, and you, and you yeah. came back, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Quit high school, went back, graduated with my class. Right, right. But quarterbacks have to make decisions and make them quickly, <laughs> yes? <laughs> they do. Yes, they do. So I'm wondering what your, how you, the way that you grew up informs the way that you move now, which is quickly. You move, you move quickly, but with informed decisions. I guess yeah. I should turn that into questions. Do you, no, 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 do you move quickly? I, I, I do you it. move quickly, and how do you make decisions? What's the decision making process? Because you've experienced. Oh, there, there's not a process. It's just it, it comes in one ear, and I, I think one of my spiritual gifts is discernment. I've, I've always been a good judge of people and characters. Okay, I studied under Michael Gerber, mm. and I remember sitting in, in a dream room presentation one time, and I'm watching him on stage, listen to people talk to him about what they do, and he's like, "Wait, wait, wait! Why do you do that?" Why do you do that? Why don't you do this? And, and I've always thought, man, I'm good at that. Because I listen to people say, hey, we're going to do it this way. And I'm like, oh, oh why, why do it that way? Right. And it's just the way my mind works, I guess. Systems and processes, uh, I've never been good at just step by step by step by step by step. Right. I'm like, I'm here. I need to get to here. How okay. do we do it? Let's get there. Got it. And... I'm not afraid to start businesses. Uh, I think if you can run one business, you can run four. Sure. If you're an entrepreneur and you've got the right people with you, mm. you don't have to make every single decision. You've got to lead the ship in the right direction and keep an eye on it and make sure it's going that way. It's worked pretty well so far. Seems to be. That does. It... <sighs> Well, and again, this, this comes back to a conversation we had yesterday and then yesterday at dinner about mastery and about uh, progress. And it's being a work in progress and it's being fun. I mean, one thing that, that and I've only known you for less than a day right now, although we've been Facebook friends for a little mm -hmm. while, you radiate fun, man. You, you, radiate, you radiate seriousness. You're very serious about your business. But you seem to be just having an incredible time with it. Now, am I misreading it or oh, no, no. am I on? Oh, no. But fun comes in, all, fun like confidence comes in a million different shapes and sizes. So talk about the, talk about the fun, talk about the challenges. Everything is a challenge. You, you, you don't just start a business. Right. You, you've got to have systems and processes in place where you mm -hmm. talk to the right people, call the attorney, call your assistant, do this, do this, do this. Okay. I get frustrated running down to the bank and having to sit there an hour to wait to open an account. It's like, okay. this is what kills me. But life is amazing, and, and I, I tell people all the time, I am living the most amazing life I could have ever imagined. And when you can wake up every day like that, mm. and then you have an idea about a business, mm. and it's like, wow, what if? And I've got a thing. It's on my wall at the house. It's right in front of where my treadmill used to be, so I used to see it every morning. Okay. The founder of GoDaddy said he, he asked himself, most people ask themselves, what if this won't work? Right. He says, I ask myself, what if this does work? And when I think about a business, I was like, okay, what, what if? What if this business grows to be bigger than me? What does it do? Mm. Does it make the world a better place? Does it just make money? Sure. Does it just solve problems? What does it do? And I'm an idea guy. I remember watching Shark Tank one night. We talked about Shark Tank yesterday. We sure did. I watched Shark Tank one day, and Mark Cuban says, look, he says, I I'm going to give you what you're asking for. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. you, you you've got it. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a deal. Everybody else, I think, had already got out. He said, we're, we're going to make a deal. Right. I'm going to give you exactly what you're asking for, mm -hmm. but I don't want it. I don't want the product. Do whatever you want with it. I'll help you. Right. You're an idea guy. 
For the next five years, our agreement is when you have an idea, you call me. Any idea you have, I'm like, that's a winner. Great. We're going. And my, my entire thought process is, and I remember the day I watched it, I'm like, that's me. If Mark Cuban ever met me, right. he'd say, hey, I'm going to keep you on retainer. Sure. You're my idea guy. Sure. You're either going to come up with an idea or I'm going to call you and say, hey, man, look, I got an idea about this. Think about it. Sure. Bye. Sure. And sure. that's the way my mind works. It's, you know, there's that old story about when Jim Carrey moved to Hollywood, uh, you know, in the 80s, he wrote himself a check for a million dollars and he put it on his wall. And, you know, a couple of years later, he's making 26 million a, a year. And here I'm looking over your screen. You've got Steve Jobs, but you also have, have Mark Cuban, Cuban there. And so with the idea that, you know, you manifest things, right? You're manifest. Absolutely. You put these things there and, and sooner or later they happen. Affirmations, manifestations, all of it. Talk a little bit about that. You're a man of faith. Talk about how your faith informs and impacts the work that you do. I don't go to church all the time. I, I don't believe in the politics. Okay. I, I've, I've been through a lot of that, and it's enough to wear you out sometimes. Sure. But my mother will tell you, uh, God blessed me when I was a baby. Okay. And she literally carried me into the church and said, look, pray for him, do something. I can't handle him. And I was crying, she said, all out every night. Just it was what it was. So. She carried me into church, said that Lori, she, she went out to walk around the block at night. We, we lived in a, a not great part of Dallas. Okay. And she says, I'm walking up the sidewalk at, and you can hear the choir singing in the church. It's at night. And she says, I walked in and you're just bawling. She says, eventually the preacher says, what, what's going on? Y'all got something you need to pray about? Let's pray. And she says, I carried you down front and says, look, I don't know what to do. Sure. She said, I never cried at night again. So what was it? What, what, what transpired? You know, I don't know. I was just a baby. They laid hands on me. They prayed for me. And sure. And when you hear that your whole life growing up, you know, look, God, God's got me. Yeah. I'm not afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn something from it. Sure. I I'm sad that I waited till I was 54 mm. to learn to change my life. Because sure. I had just started my business a year or two before. Okay. I'm like, man, if, if I had known I had no idea that, that I could make a million dollars. I had no idea I could make a million dollars a year. I'm looking at businesses now where we're like, man, if this works, we're, we're going to make 50 million bucks a year. And it's like, okay. Sure. It doesn't scare me. But it, I, scared, but it scared you before? Oh, oh well, I don't, no, I don't think I ever thought it was possible. Okay. If you'd have told me. Six years ago, right. while I still had a plumbing company before I ever learned anything about social media, one day you're going to be in a position where, where you can make, God, $10 million a year, 20, 50, sure. 100. Sure. I just said, you're nuts. Right. There's no, I'm a plumber. You're a plumber. And yet, talking about that before, and you talked about the, the founder of, of GoDaddy, a company I admire a lot. Absolutely. Um, but it parallels a lot with what Kennedy said. There are those who say, why, why not? And I, you know, why and why not? Kind of funny how history repeats itself, isn't it? <laughs> All the time. And isn't it? And um, at the conversation that we had last night, dinner, and we talked about America being, was once the greatest country in the world. Is it? Is it not? And how that showed up in one of the great openings of, right? The newsroom. You have this remarkable quality, if I may, of, of resilience. And not just of resilience. It reminds me of that old, that, that, that great saying by Zig Ziglar, right? The, the incredible motivational speaker in the 80s who said, you can have anything you want in life if you help other people get what you want. And my, I'm a pretty good reader of people too. And I'm getting the feeling that that is something that informs your life. That yes, you, yes, you are very good at making money. You're very good at starting businesses. But you also have this very generous spirit about you. I walked into this office last night. We'd never met. We'd spoken on the phone. You gave me a great big hug. And, and it was, it was transformational. Let's about transformations, right? There's, there's transaction and there's trans, there's transformation, you bet. right? And yes, there's transactional pieces, but I, I met your team this morning. Um, and there's a lot of love in this company. And if not, you guys are faking it really well. Talk a little bit about your grooming of your team. Cause we're nothing without our teams. Right? You know, and, and yeah, you know, that, that, that's a tough one for me because I'm hard on my team. Yeah. I, I expect things to get done right. Okay. I don't expect to make a mistake twice. Okay. 
You make it once, I'm fine. Doesn't matter to me. All right. Drop the camera, broke it. Great. What can we do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Okay. I had a plumber call me one day. He's in the field. I mean, you can hear it in his voice. He does not want to talk to me. Mm. And I said, man, what's going on? He said, Roger, I cut the camera. You've got a sewer camera. It's $8,000. You yeah, yeah. run it down the sewer. And he located the problem, dug it up, and he goes to cut the pipe. And he had forgot to pull the sewer camera back out. Okay. He's like, Roger, I'll pay for it. I know you won't. But, you know, fool me once, shame on me. Don't okay. Have, yeah. So, so let's right. teach all the other plumbers okay. why we don't do it this way. Which goes to something that you talked about earlier in this, in this podcast and something you talked about last night. You, is one of your long-term goals to, to, let me say to better the planet. You're benefiting other people, right? Talk about so that. I want to lean, lean, lean into that a little bit more. My goal is to retire at 65, which is about four and a half years away now. Okay. And when I say retire, I want enough money in the bank that I can get in my truck, get on okay. a plane, do whatever yeah. it is. I want to be able to drive around the country, right. fly around the country. I want to walk into trade schools, unions, mm. technical colleges, high schools that have shop classes, whatever it is. Yeah. And walk in and talk to people yeah, and tell them why the trades are amazing. Sure. Why this is an amazing future where they can do whatever they want to do. Sure. And then I want to be able to give to them before I leave. So you want to work because you want to, not because you have to. No, I don't have to. I don't have to. Now. You don't have to now. You don't have to now. But having that amount of money in the bag, that's a nice safe amount. It's, it's, and I'm not going to say I don't have to. I, I've, I've bought property. I've, I've got bills to pay now. Right. So, yeah, I, I do have to work. I don't have to work the way I do. I don't have to keep trying to open new businesses, keep trying to do new sure. things. I don't have to keep trying to grow. Sure. I can just say, look, we, we can just coast. We, we're, hey, sure. we're safe. Let's just slide on in. Sure. Well, one gets the feeling that that energy will be directed in other ways, too. Case in point, going in, you know. Oh, absolutely. You burn very bright. You know, I mean, supernovas burn out, but supernovas last a long, long time. Uh, I'll burn out one day, but so, I'll be going 90 miles an hour. We'll see I until the time, until the it, time that happens. It'll be going right? 90 miles an hour. You're, you're a man on a mission. Not to, Wave a magic wand. It's when you mission, that's one of my songs that I, I play when I walk, before I walk on stage. There's a song called Man on a Mission. Can you sing a little bit of it? Yeah. I sure. don't say. Right, I just, you, you never know unless you ask. Oh, the larceny. Man on a mission. Okay. All right. I, I, play I, it. I'm worried. Play it. It's motivational. It's, it, well, talk about, talk about that. Talk about things that, that are outside of business and emotional. What, what, what motivates you? It, well, what, you, you, I tell you the things that you've talked about. Here's what's funny. You know, okay. you mentioned Zig. All right. I'd never heard Zig speak. Never heard a tape. Never heard a cassette. Okay. Till probably sometime during the last 10 years. My life changed 10, 12 years ago. I woke up and thought, wow, I can do something more than just being a plumber. And that motivates me now. Listening to Jim Rohn, listening to... You don't hear too many people talking about Jim Rohn. No, they're, they're, talking about, that, they're talking about Tony Robbins, they're talking about Grant Cardone, love them. All of whom are great. Gary V, love them. But, but Jim Rohn... He, he, was, he was real. He, Earl Nightingale, go, go back. Nightingale, you know, the, right? So many right. things that, that I remember walking in with my ex-wife okay. to church right. for Financial Peace University. Okay. This was, I'm going to say, probably almost 10 years ago. All right. Not quite that long, but pretty close. We're at Financial Peace University the first night. Okay. They show the video of Dave Ramsey you know, walking out on stage. There's a dining room sure. table. Sure. And, he, and he's telling his story and he's doing all that. Okay. And we're at a long table. People on the other side, people on this side, and she's in front of me. Okay. And I literally leaned up, and in her ear, in, in her ear, I said, I can do that. And she kind of looked up at me. <laughs> she said, you can talk about finances? I said, oh, God, no, I'm horrible with money. Sure. I said, but I can get on stage and talk like that about plumbing. And she just started laughing. Not in a bad way. She thought it was funny. Sure. But, but she knows me. Sure. And then a couple of years later, we're on a plane. She had gone to do a job in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, etiquette and protocol consultant. We talked about that. I went with her and we were flying back and 
We got on the plane and we were on the very front row. There was already somebody on the aisle seat. So she sat in the middle. I sat by the window and they got to talking and mm. it was funny because she's like, what do you do? He's like, well, it's top secret. I can't tell you. And so anyway, they got to talking. He was a principal in a company that built water treatment plants. All right. And they're talking. And so he looks over at me and says, what do you do? I said, I just travel around and protect her. And he said, you sound kind of like me now. Uh, so we started talking and, uh, and uh, I'm a lead AP, I'm plumber. So I understood what he was talking about. And I, I'm, I'm talking and I get going and okay. I get all excited about it. Okay. And he looks at me, he says, do you speak? And I said, I'm speaking to you right now. And he died laughing. He said, do you get on stage and speak? I said, oh God, no, I'm right. just a plumber. Right. And he says, Roger, I can make a million dollars a year off you. And I thought from that day forward. Yeah. If he can make a million, how much can I make? Well, sure. Sure. There's that multiplier. And then I became a speaker. I learned how to get on stages. Which you seem to love right now. I do. I enjoy. Yeah, I can see why you do. It's inspirational. We only have a couple of minutes before we mm -hmm. go. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Where do we have? About a minute. A minute. Okay. You, you're on a mission to serve young people, right? You're building, you're building this this. This business right now, we don't have time to get into it. Not just young, but yeah, young is the big, my biggest audience, helping okay. people get help, in help, it, help, it, help me help mm -hmm. people. Three, three best pieces of advice to people who aren't in your ecosystem yet mm -hmm. want to get into it. Reach out, number one. Okay. I, 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 I talk with all kinds of people. Uh, I think that we all can learn and help each other. Okay. Don't be afraid to ask anybody for anything. Okay. It's, Jim Rohn says, ask. You never That's know. It. Shut the book right there. Wayne Gretzky Ask. says you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Amen. I think that's what and, and golfers will tell you, if you don't hit it hard enough, you're never going to make the shot. Absolutely. And I hit it hard. That's part of something we talk about every day. Sure. And what's number three? Mm. Don't be afraid to make money. My parents were workers. We didn't have money. They didn't know to teach us about money. Right. You can make whatever you want to make. And you can do whatever you want with it. Absolutely. Better to have and not need than to need and not have. You can always give it away in the service, right? It, and and I do a lot of that. I bet you do. I do. This was so much fun to can, can we do this again? Absolutely. Thoroughly enjoyed it, Dad. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Great pleasure knowing you. Thank you. Bye.